congratulations on we're talking about the new record. How good does it feel to be talking about this record? Um, well, it has, I don't think it's really sunk in that that, that much yet. Um, because we've been working a lot right up until, for the last year, we've been, we finished the record, we were like halfway through the record this time last year. And I came back from New York and um, and then all that stuff happened and um, found myself, you know, in jail and then, and then back in a detox and um, from then onwards it's been, it's been, you know, quite a trip really. Does it, uh, how, how, when, you, when you finish a record, how long does it take for you to kind of get some distance and really kind of be able to kind of evaluate it? Does it take a while? Um, I've said this before, and it sounds kind of cliched, I guess, but, um, you know, to me it's like, you know, I paint, I paint a lot uh, as well. Um, I have painted a lot in the past, and something I want to start doing again. Um, and, you know, when you finish a painting, it's kind of not yours anymore. You know, you've finished it, and you hand it over to, you know, be judged, or whatever you want to call it, and for other people to enjoy it. Um, or hate or whatever, um, but create some kind of reaction or emotion in people. And I think it's the same thing with a record. I feel like once we've finished it, I love singing, you know, I love to sing. And the um, sad thing about making a record, spending you know, nearly 15 months making it or something, um, I'm only actually singing for probably like about a week <laughs> in total, you know, like in time. And um, I guess that's something I miss about touring because, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm more naturally a sort of singer. I like to entertain and that's what I get off on. And the rest of the process, this kind of stuff, even, I find a little bit awkward talking about it. You know, because it's kind of done. It's done. There it is. And um, I feel uncomfortable then trying to kind of make people want to like it, I, you know, but that's the, the nature of the beast really, the music business, you know, there's a lot of competition. And it's not about talking about it, it's about doing it, so it's like... Mm -hmm. well, and that's what I mean, we've done it, right. you know, it's done, it's finished, and, um, you know, it speaks for itself, and you either like it or you don't. What, how, how closely, does, I've heard some of the other, Martin, and some of the other guys talk about that this kind of sort of parallels the journey that you guys were on since the end of the, the last tour, is that accurate? I mean, is this, is well, this kind of a document? Well, I don't know, I wouldn't say that. I mean, the album primarily sort of talks about, I think musically as well as lyrically, destiny and your own destiny and um, how, um, how we all try and um, steer it in a way that we feel is right, you know, um, quick fixes everywhere, and whether it's sex, food, drugs, whatever, um, or rollerblading, you know, and we do things to extreme and um, you kind of miss everything on the way if you're not careful. And I think um, destiny is pretty much set out for you anyway. I really believe that and I think Martin believes that too. And you know, being in the same band for 17 years, um, the same group of people, you pretty much, even though um, personally and individually the way you deal with life might be different, we've actually experienced a lot of the same things and um, you know the same kind of highs and the same kind of lows through, you know, because we've spent a lot of time together over the 17 years. So I think that's the only um, relation between the way my, Martin writes and I sing, it's kind of like I wear Martin's feelings on my sleeve. <laughs> and they fit, you know. A little bit how do you, what's the secret to getting along with people and being so productive over such a long period of time? You know, most marriages don't last that long, most relationships don't right. last that long. Um, basically, not trying to fight the process of the fact that you don't get on, you know, <laughs> most of the time. I mean, it's like a family relationship, you know, a very dysfunctional family. 
and um, when one person in that family kind of goes off the rails a bit, the whole thing shakes around for a long time. And um, it's like one of those little mobiles you see, you know, in recovery places, you know. <laughs> um, when someone's sitting there, like me, I, I sort of jump around a bit and the whole thing goes all over the place. And I think that's what Depeche Mode has been like all in its, for its whole existence, really. But I think that's... Um, that's kind of what makes it work. Because if it all runs too smoothly, um, I think it, it's hard to... I'm not saying that um, you have to go to kind of like the depths of hell to, to produce something that's worthy. But um, sometimes um, I think when you're in a place of um, sadness or pain, it's coming out of it is, is, is the high. And um, I, I've, I feel like that when I sing, you know, um, that I can sing about how I'm really feeling inside with my voice. That's how I can express how I feel. Talk a little bit about the vocals. Um, we were talking earlier before uh, rolling. Um, I, I just think the vocals are outstanding, really strong on this record. And talk a little bit about the, the vocal coach that you worked with. You alluded to that mm -hmm. earlier, you never. Had a vocal, had a vocal coach I did years and years ago, in about 1979, uh, 80, something like that, and and it was around the same. T I remember I, it was somewhere in London. And there was this woman called Tana De Brett, and I used to show up for a lesson just after John Lydon had finished, and she was trying to teach him to sing too. And he used to sit in the corner of the room <laughs> and just sulk. Malcolm McLaren would drop him off. And he would just sulk in the corner and he wouldn't do a thing. And then Malcolm would come and pick him up, you know. I guess he was bullied into it. And um, I felt a bit like that. And I got a bit scared that um, this woman was um, trying to turn me into something that I wasn't. Or change the character of the way I sung. And, you know, singing like rock and roll music is very different to operatic kind of training and stuff. But there's a lot of stuff that you learn from these people that helps in every way, just about breathing. And singing's all about breathing and blowing air, you know. Um, well, what happened was um, we, we got about halfway through the record and we were doing some vo trying to do vocals. We spent six weeks in New York or something and I only managed to complete one song. Um, I was pretty sick at the time and just finding it, everything really hard. Um, just to kind of sit on the stool and sing was a, was hard, um, and the only song I sang was "Sister of Night," which I actually really liked the vocal, and it kind of set a precedent for the rest of the record, and everybody really liked what I did. But I couldn't do anything else. I'd like exhausted myself just doing one song. I know it sounds pretty pathetic, but I wasn't very well, and. Um, so it was suggested that I go back to LA and try and get my shit together and um, work with a vocal coach, which I you know, resisted at first and just kind of felt like everybody was ganging up on me as usual. But I knew that I, I needed some kind of discipline and order in my life. And um, so I came back to LA and did completely the opposite for a bit and died for a little while and then um, came back and um, got into it, you know. Um, with the help of a lot of people um, and a lot of encouragement from, from other people like myself and uh, they had the same problems with drugs and stuff and they helped me to kind of make that um, transition into real life again. Um, so I would go and see Evelyn in my day. I, I was actually living in a sober living place which you have a curfew at night and stuff like that and um, with a lot of other friends. I'm going to see some of tonight, which I'm looking forward to. And um, I'd go out and see Evelyn for like three or four hours a day and work with her at the piano on the songs that I couldn't sing before. And gradually, after a few weeks, um, I was singing really well. And I couldn't even deny it myself that I felt good as well. You know, so um, and that was then and this is now. So, you know, it was what I, the lesson I learned was that you never stop learning, you know, and it's something I probably should have done a long time ago. Is that going to be there tonight? I'm afraid not. Oh, no. No. She's out of town oh, no. and um, she's really sad oh, that she's missed yeah. it, but um, she doesn't get back, I don't think, till Sunday. Oh, dear. Tell me a little bit about um, 
tonight's event? What we're going to see? We're going to be there later? What? what um, uh, well, it's a party, and we've done a similar thing in London. Um, for the record, like a record release party, and um, there's going to be quite a lot of fans there that have won um, tickets through various radio stations and stuff, and um, also a lot of friends and guests, and I guess altogether, like I don't know, like 1,500, 2,000 people or something like that. So it'd be some party, and there's DJs and all that kind of stuff, and lots of strange-looking people walking around, and. and uh, and for people who are coming, this is their only chance to see you guys in the States this year, right? Well, we're going to actually, yeah, we play like five songs as well. Four, one old song and four songs from the record. Um, and it's, it's fun doing it, you know, I'm really, I really, I'm really looking forward to it. What, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the, uh, Mark, Mark has talked about how close you guys came. Good do you feel? <coughs> I mean, you look great. You look like you're really. Thanks. <laughs> um, I guess I'm just really. You know, it's not like I've never performed sober before. Like, you know, with nothing, a drink or a pill or anything or something, you know. Um, I have, but I can't remember the last time I did. And the same, we've done the same thing in London. And I think, for me personally, it's like, um, it's, it's good enough, you know, to, um, to walk out and sing and, and feel really nervous and excited at the same time and, and um, not have to sort of use something to prop myself up with and just have to go out and kind of, you know, be drawn to the lions, as Mick Jagger would say. And, um, um, it's okay, you know, it's like, I feel like I, I'm, I'm pretty happy, I'm just really, the most thing, the thing that I'm most proud of at the moment is that I've managed to um, work at staying sober, you know, to be honest, and um, I'm starting to feel so much more alive every day, you know, I get a little bit of David back, you know, and lost, lost it somewhere, and um, I didn't think that was possible, I honestly didn't, you know, being the sort of egotistic guy that I am, I uh, thought I was different and I could, I could handle it, you know. What the um, uh, red reviews that have said that this record, people are, Martin's even said that this is the Sonic, sonically this is the hardest record because you guys have come up with. You, I don't know what he means by that, really. Hard, uh, Maybe he means hard in like the hardest to, that we that we managed to finish and make. Um, I'd say it's the most soulful record that we've made. Um, you know, I've got to say like when I hear some of the songs, um, you know, I get kind of goosebumps. You know, There's a couple of the songs on the record I think we hear really kind of hit the spot. What, how, how important is it for you that other artists cite the band as an influence and, and say that, that that may be the reason they got into music? Or that, is that important to you, that the, that the, that the band's place in history is um, I think it's flattering and um, I think it's great if people um, uh, get influenced to make music because they like the music that we make or whatever or seem that you you know, um, you don't necess necessarily have to be the greatest musician in the world to to have an idea. You know, um, there's a lot of technology that you can use now to get your ideas onto a piece of tape. Um, so I think that's nice, and I think we've influenced a lot of people like that. Um, but as far as the kind of playing God thing, it doesn't sit very well. <laughs> What, what advice do you give to uh, uh, young musicians who want to get into the business? And, uh, what, what kind of things do you tell them? How do you Just have a good time and don't take it too seriously and don't, don't take yourself too seriously. You know, uh, it could be really dangerous. What gives you the most satisfaction out of uh, being a musician? 
Um, being part of something that makes people feel something, makes people think, and makes people have, have a feeling, emotions. And, um, I think music can really help you through bad times, good times as well. Um, and I also think that it's one of the most honest ways to express yourself as a person, you know, as a human being, through music. It's a real kind of gift that's been given. Has the music business changed a lot since since the band started? Do you see it? Is it fundamentally the same beast, just different stripes, or is it uh, is it a different game? Well, I would say it's way more aggressive, yeah, business-wise. I, you know, see, I grew up listening to The Clash and, and The Pistols and The Banshees and The Damned and stuff like that. And when I was a young teenager and so that kind of attitude was ingrained in me. But, and it's um, good while it lasts, but um, you have to, I guess, you know, one of the most irritating things about making music and being, you know, wanting a lot of people to hear it and trying to get it across to as many people as possible is that you have to play certain games and sometimes it doesn't feel so good, you know. But um, I'd rather people were listening to us than the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. What, uh, last question, what, uh, what are the plans for the rest of the year? Um, I'm going back to New York and um, just being <laughs> for a while. Um, I'm looking forward to going back home and, you know, just slowly um, slip into life again and be part of life and hang out with my friends and stuff like that. Finding more data. Thanks very much. Thanks. Cheers.